Welcome back YouTube to the card combo show with me Chocobo Billy where we look at the weird and wonderful card combinations in the Final Fantasy TCG 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 a trading card game um, and this week it's all about the sacrificial pawns the cards I'm looking at this week are Lady Lilith from Opus 15 Scholar from Opus 15 Caius from Opus 5 Ultimecia from Opus 14 and finally Vane from Opus 15 all right. Okay, Lady Lilith, a 2CP 5K Lightning Forward with the text "Remove one forward other than Lady Lilith, uh, Lady Lilith, Lilith from the game. Gain one crystal. You can only use this ability once per turn. Uh, one crystal. Choose one Lightning Forward. It gains haste until the end of the turn. You can only use this ability once per turn. And two crystals. Choose one forward. Of course, five or less. Break it. So quite powerful that second ability. Be able to give something haste is nice just for that final push and be able to remove one forward you control from the game yeah uh, so it actually doesn't state remove one forward you control other than lady Lilith from the game but it is one forward you control when something pays a cost it's your own payment so you know you're not going to be able to just put a forward your opponent controls from the game uh, to uh, gain yourself a crystal so otherwise that would just be you know broken <laughs> Uh, so, Lightning. So, when you play Lightning onto the field, I've talked about this before, but when you play Lightning onto the field, her ability stacks, and you can choose two forwards your opponent controls to remove them from the game, and then when Lightning leaves the field, they go to your opponent's hand. What you can do is, with Lady Lilith on the field, is playing Lightning, and you have Lightning's ability stacks. You can then use Lady Lilith's ability to remove Lightning from the game, which then gains a crystal. What will happen at that point is that Lightning's ability to play, give the forwards back to your opponent's hand will stack. So that will stack on top of that. And then in resolution, your Lightning will try to give the cards back to the opponent, but there are no cards currently removed. And then the first Lightning ability will resolve, which will remove the forwards from the game. And they are now gone forever. So ultimately it does mean that you are only paying 7 CP for Lightning and you're not getting the forward, but you are getting a crystal, which is fine, and you're paying 7 CP to remove two of your opponent's forwards, which is really good. Um, and Lightning can get around things like Field Thanos as well, uh, because she is obviously quite high costed. So it's just a really, really good combo to be able to remove two things permanently, whilst gaining a crystal as well, which is decent enough. You can also give something haste if you wanted to. All that can work towards uh, two crystals to be able to break something else if you wanted. All right, red 13. So when red 13 enters the field, you may pay one fight. If you do so, play one forward from your hand onto the field. If it leaves the field for any reason, remove it from the game instead. At the end of the turn, remove it from the game. So similar to the way that red 13 and Hojo works is that when Hojo comes onto the field to select uh, the forward that red 13 played, provided it is removed, it doesn't matter how it gets removed, provided it is removed, the... Um, payment has been fulfilled and the same will apply for Lady Lilith. So what it means is you can use Red 13 to play a forward onto the field. Now it'll be a forward that you want to have a good entry ability obviously um, or potentially a good leave the field ability. Um, ultimately enter the field, do its thing and then you can play use Lady Lilith's ability to remove that forward from the game to then gain yourself a crystal and even though Red 13 says it has to be removed when it leaves for any reason because Lady Lilith only states remove that forward you are still getting the crystal for that. Ninja. So, <laughs> one water and dull. Put ninja into the break zone. Choose one forward opponent controls. Activate it. You gain control. Into, into, uh, blah, 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 blah. Gain control of it till the end of the turn. Um, now I know I said earlier that it's only forwards you control or your forwards, but you know that forward now is your forward. So even though you're technically killing your own ninja to then gain a forward your opponent controls, if it's a very problematic forward and you can then remove it from the game and get a crystal from it, that's pretty good going. Blue worm. So. Being able to just, you know, make Blue Worm a forward at any point and then before you get to the end of the turn, just sack it off, remove it from the game to gain yourself a crystal is decent enough. And what's good about Lady Lilith is that you, whilst you can only use the ability once per turn, you can use it at any point. So you can have Blue Worm, or it doesn't have to be Blue Worm, it could be anything else, but I went for Blue Worm because it gets your card when it enters the field. Um, your opponent can attack with something, make Blue Worm a forward block with it and then use Lady Lilith just to put that forward or remove the forward from the game to then gain a crystal anyway because Blue Worm's going to die anyway. 
Lazos. So when Lazos says, uh, Lazos, why can't I speak today? Jeez. Uh, when Lazos enters the field, choose one forward, freeze it. Nah, it's not that great, to be honest. But when Lazos leaves the field, gain a crystal. So ultimately means that you can gain two crystals from these. And again, it's similar to the blue worm thing. If Lazos is going to die, you might as well make it. Yeah, he's removed from the game, but you get two crystals from it, which is really good. Guts Go. So when Guts Go leaves the field, add all the cards removed by Guts Go's ability to your hand. And for every time he enters the field or attacks, remove the top card of your deck from the game. So really good, actually. Just even if he gets you a couple of cards to hand, that on top of the fact that you get a crystal, pretty decent. All right, Scholar. So a 2CP Earth backup. When Scholar enters the field, choose up to one card in your break zone, place it at the bottom of your deck and put the top card of your deck into the break zone. And then Dull puts Scholar into the break zone, shuffle your deck. So, I mean, he's the first card that asks anyone to shuffle their deck, which is really interesting. So it means that maybe your opponent has put something to the bottom of your deck. You can now shuffle it with Scholar to hopefully push it a bit closer to the top. I mean, it literally can't get any worse if it's at the bottom of your deck. Uh, so that's quite nice. But being able to put something back into your deck is also equally good. Um, being able, I think, before now, we've had, aside from like doing weird combos, like getting stuff out of your break zone and then putting cards back into your deck with other cards, um, there's only been one card that has outright put a card back into your deck. Um, no, so there are two. Uh, Lightning and Ultimisia, and Ultimisia, Unaleska. Unaleska? Yeah, Unaleska. Um, so having a card that can just do any card from your, uh, your break zone into your deck is really decent. So, Magic Pot. Obviously, Magic Pot can it has to break itself to be able to use the ability, and it will also break the forward. Um, but being able to put forwards from the field into the, uh, from the break zone back into the deck is quite funny because you play one earth and double put magic pot and one forward without generic icon into the break zone, search one forward. Now obviously the payment is put the forward into the break zone. Um, <laughs> bear with me here. Uh, it's put the forward into the break zone, but that then snacks ability to search it. You could hypothetically Tama Scholar onto the field to then get that same forward and put it back into the deck, at which point Magic Pot will resolve, then searching the forward you just put into the break zone with Magic Pot to play it onto the field. Um, I mean, it's not that great, to be honest, because you have to use Tama to play Scholar onto the field. But it also means that, you know, when Magic Pot's broken, you can use Scholar to put it back into the deck, and you can also use Scholar to put the forwards that you are putting into the break zone back into the deck, ready to get back out to search, or just play through Magic Pot, you know, something like that. The Emperor. So the Emperor enters the field. If you have two or more card named the Emperor in your break zone, your opponent discards all one... Uh, 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 your opponent discards one card or more from that. Discards one card from their hand. When the Emperor is put from the field into the break zone, you may search for one card named the Emperor and put it into the break zone. If you do so, play the Emperor from the break zone onto the field dull at the end of the turn. Now, what this card requires is Emperors in the break zone, but also Emperors in the deck. So playing something like Scholar means that you can keep on making sure that you've got enough Emperors in the break zone to be able to get the discard when this guy enters, but also making sure you've got enough Emperors actually in the deck so that you can keep on searching them to put them into the break zone. Now, obviously, Scholar, you can use a maximum of three times unless you, you know, break it, bring it back to hand, do some other stuff. Um, it's still just increases the longevity of the Emperor's effect, which is fun. Talking of reusing Scholar, Robol Akbel. At the beginning of your main phase one, during each of your turns, choose one back up in your break zone, add it to your hand. So being able to, you know, just use Scholar, shuffle your deck if you really want. And then at the uh, beginning of main phase one, just getting a card back to your hand, play onto the field, put a card back into your deck. Really, really useful. And it works excellently with something like the Emperor. Um, you can use it with other, other cards as well that require searches. So there's, uh, I forget their name. Mega Sisters? I don't think they're removed. Do they remove? I don't think they remove. But either way, being able to put things that, you know, kind of keep on searching, putting into the break zone, play back onto the field, that sort of thing, is really useful to be able to use Robot Actbell to keep on playing Scholar, to keep on getting those forwards from the break zone back into the deck, to then search them and play them again. Again, works excellently with Magic Pot. Ultros. So, yeah, more cards that search from the deck and cards that like to be in the break zone at the same time. So, having enough Ultros in the break zone so that Ultros actually gets you a decent effect, but also when this Ultros dies, 
paying the two water to search an Ultros, which you could have put back into your deck through Scholar's ability to play that back onto the field as well. So Scholar just means that you have this endless cycle of cards going from your break zone into the deck onto the field, into the break zone into the deck onto the field, and just keep on running it. And it's just so much fun to do so. Realm, so again, I mean, most monsters have their best effects when they're put from the field into the break zone, but playing it so Scholar then puts those monsters back into the break zone, uh, back into the deck, sorry, so you can play Realm again or play something else to then get those cards back onto the field immediately is really useful. And ultimately, you do have in Earth some good monster cards as well, like Larkaikus, which would get you a monster from the break zone, but this just kind of circumnavigates that bit because ultimately Scholar puts that monster back into the deck, which means you, when you do play Realm, Realm can then search it straight onto the field along with other cards that do so. Cloud, so obviously dull, put cloud, or sorry, put one category seven forward into the break zone, search one forward of cost one CP or more, then the forward in the break zone and play it onto the field, earn his ability doing your main phase. So one, it's good to be able to put that forward that cloud puts into the break zone back into the deck, but two, you know, there's so many times when you've only got, you know, just that one spice card, which you want to play with cloud and it's already in your break zone. That sucks. So having Scholar to put it from the break zone back into the deck so that you can actually use Cloud's ability, really, really useful. Going backwards. Seymour. Sorry, guys. I'm, I'm struggling today, aren't I? Jeez. Um, so uh, when Seymour enters the field, search one summon and put it on top of your deck. But again, it might be just that one, that one off summon that is huge, that you really want to have a good effect, that has good EX, but you know, it's in your break zone. Scholar, put it into the deck. Play Seymour, put it on top of your deck. Cecil, when Cecil enters the field, if you don't pay one crystal, Cecil deals you one point of damage. Damage three, when Cecil's put from the field into the break zone, you may search for one card named Cecil, play it onto the field. You see where I'm going with this, just cards that like to play things onto the field, but also like to be put into the break zone, just use Scholar. Scholar puts it back into the deck and can play it back onto the field as well. And again, technically you could use Tama because Cecil's ability will stack, when he's put from the field into the break zone, use Talma to play Scholar on the field, put that same Cecil back into the deck, play it back onto the field. <laughs> That's just so stupid, I love it. And Guy, so yeah, the problem I have with this engine is that your opponent's so quick to get rid of cards. Um, and whilst you like cards like Maria being on in the break zone for Leon, being able to put use the scholar to put leon back into the deck so that when you play guy you can get leon back onto the field then play maria just kind of adds a bit more longevity to the, the to the deck now obviously that is guy and um or fire and wind so adding earth to it isn't fantastic but you do have the Furion from opus 15 that is also earth as well so it means that you can potentially go out of element if you really wanted to um ultimately be able to refund those cards back into the uh, deck to be able to replay them through guy is quite useful flan so, <laughs> why not, you know, just dull, put Flan into the break zone, your opponent discards a card, then use another Flan to search Flan, you know, you've played Scholar, put that Flan back into your deck, get it back to hand, play onto the field, dull, break, play Scholar again, you know, just keep rinsing, repeating. Again, using Rebel Akbal for any of these is really useful to be able to get Scholar back to your hand to then replay the Scholar, to then keep on doing these cycles is just silly and fun. Alright, Caius. So a 4 CP 9k fire forward with Brave, and when Caius is put from the field into the break zone, discard one card from your hand. So, not a great ability, to be honest. The fact you have to discard isn't amazing, and to be honest, he's usurped by so many cards like uh, the multi element forwards now that gain Brave and really good abilities. The only drawback is that you have to pay more than one element. Yeah, that's a drawback. Um, but using something like Unit means that Caius never actually goes to the break zone. So, you don't have to discard a card. So, you know, it's. It's fine, I guess. Uh, Iodalus. So, when cast book from the field the break zone, you can then discard a summon, which you can actually then use Iodalus to cast said summon uh, to do something. Lena. So, cast book from the field into the break zone, which means you then discard, I don't know, a 3 CP forward. You can then play Lena to get that forward back onto the field. And Lena, I think, is one of my favorite cards from Opus 15 because only having to pay two crystals to be able to play a forward of 3 CP onto the field for just two crystals is really really effective and there's a lot of good forwards that are three cp so i think she's really good and combining it with kaius meaning you can force that forward into the break zone decent enough scholar so you use kaius kaius puts a forward into oh, sorry discards a card into the break zone you then play scholar to put that card back into the deck 
uncle. Job's your uncle. Job's your uncle? Bob's your uncle. Is he your uncle? I don't know. Lightning. So, when lightning enters the field, choose one card named Odin in your break zone, put it on top of your deck. So, you've had to discard for Kaius, so you put a light, uh, uh, Odin into the break zone, you then play lightning to then put the Odin on top of your deck. And lightning. So, the cost required to cast lightning is increased one for each card in your opponent's hand. If you have two cards or less in your hand, lightning gains a 1,000 power in haste. So, actually, getting rid of cards from hand is a decent thing. And at the end of each of your turns, if each player has no cards in their hands, lightning deals you your opponent one point of damage. So, obviously, Caius dying means that you'll discard cards from hand, getting towards lightning's ability. But it also means that both of these cards like you having no cards in hand. Because if Caius dies and you have no cards to discard, that's perfectly fine. Um... And ultimately, lightning will also deal your penalty point damage for that as well. So, not bad. Undead Princess. So, <laughs> uh, when Kaya dies, you put Undead Princess into the break zone. You then sack off two Earth backups and bring it back onto the field. Stat oh, well, that's has aged badly, isn't it? Shows how long ago I made this video. Um, let's just uh, scoot past that, shall we? <laughs> Alright, Ultimisia. Love this card. Quite possibly my favourite card from Opus 14. I'd, any card that allows me to take control of my opponent's forwards, absolutely adore. That and Golbez. Oh, so good. Um, so when Ultimisia enters the field, select one forward you control. Put it into the break zone. When you do so, choose one forward of the same cost as the forward you put into the break zone. You gain control of it. So it works excellently alongside Vikings. You put Vikings into the break zone, you draw a card, and you take control of your opponent's forwards. And Vikings are quite easily swarm the field, especially with the newer viking as well that with lena means lena uh, is that name knows uh leia leia yeah jesus sorry there's so many cards i can't remember all their names um to bring viking back onto the field to then play ultimisia or just play ultimisia at, to kill the viking to then play there to then bring the viking back onto the field Goal bears. So, obviously, you can take control of your opponent's forwards by sacking off four characters you control. Now, four characters is a lot, and again, works well with the Vikings because you get lots of cards to your hand when they die. But you can also, I mean, you can do it either way, to be honest, but you could um, use Goal ability to take control of a opponent's forward. You can then play Ultimisia to kill that forward to take control of another of your opponent's forwards. Or you can play Ultimisia first to take control of your opponent's forward. You can then use Golbez to sack off their forward and some other characters to then also gain control of another one of their forwards. Um, I think probably doing Ultimisia first followed by Golbez is the better play. Obviously, it depends. Simply because Ultimisia has the restriction on what forward you can steal. So your opponent having more forwards is better. So then you can use Golbez to then take control of any forward your opponent controls as well. Golbez. So, you can use Ultimisia to put Golbez into the break zone to bring down four forwards of different elements of 2CP, and you also gain control of your one of your opponent's forwards as well. Cecil. So, you put Cecil from the field into the break zone to then bring down another Cecil, as well as, you know, gaining control of the forward your opponent controls. Also works nicely with anything like Ultros, all those sorts of cards. Uh, Gilgamesh. So, this Gilgamesh is pretty powerful. So, he already has a dull, put Gilgamesh into break zone to search for one card, and then Gilgamesh will cost five or less and play onto the field. But you also have damage three when Gilgamesh is put from the field into the break zone. Choose one backup of cost four or more your opponent controls or break it. And damage five when Gilgamesh is put from the field into the break zone. Choose one forward of cost four or more your opponent controls break it. So if you have damage five and use Ultimisia, you get to take control of one of your opponent's forwards. You get to break another one of their forwards and you get to break one of their backups as well, which is pretty darn good. Ultros, I already mentioned that, similar to the Cecil play earlier. Put Ultros into the break zone to then take control of your opponent's forwards, whilst also getting another Ultros to play that onto the field as well. It works with pretty much every Ultros, I just chose this one because it's visually different to the other one I choose. <laughs> Spiritus. So, Spiritus with literally any other um, Dark Forward here is what I meant to say. So, Veritas, for example. Uh, so, playing Ultimisia to put Veritas into the break zone means your opponent has to select a character they control and break it. But you also get to remove something as well because a Dark Forward you control has been put from the field into the break zone. So Spiritus will see that and be like, I'm going to remove something. And then Veritas will see something and be like, well, you know, you've got to pick something to die as well. So, And you get to take control of one of your opponent's forwards as well, not to mention. So that's a lot. So your opponent can have two forwards and a couple of backups. They will, by the end of this, only have one backup because that's just disgusting. Um, yeah, you get to remove one forward, you get to break a character, and you get to steal the forward. Nice. Ovalia. So, obviously, Ultimisia puts a forward into the break zone. You then use Ovalia's ability on that forward. So, that forward comes back onto the field. Not to mention, you also get to take control of one of your opponent's forwards. 
RG. So at uh, damage 5, when RG is put from the film to the break zone, choose one forward, of course, 3 or less. Your opponent controls, break it. But also, when RG is put from the film to the break zone, any situation you buy your opponent summons or abilities, add RG to your hand at the end of the turn. So obviously, the, sec the first ability doesn't really matter because it's your opponent's abilities. But at damage 5, be able to also break one of your opponent's forwards as well. So just by RG going to the break zone, you get to take control of the forward and also get to break something else as well. Kind of underwhelming in comparison to the other things, but still decent enough in lightning. The Emperor, so you get to put Emperor into the break zone. You can then search another Emperor, put that into the break zone, and then play this Emperor back onto the field. So, lots of similar combos here, but different utilizations and work differently. Uh, Bane, so this is a great color. Uh, an 8 CP AK forward. Before paying the cost to cast Vayne, you can remove any number of active backups you control from the game to reduce the cost required to cast Vayne by 4 for each backup removed by this way. And then the forwards you control gain plus 2,000 power, and all the forwards your opponent controls lose 2,000 power. Um, now, what's great about this card is that it can play in any element. It doesn't have to be lightning. So, you could be mono water, mono fire, doesn't matter to just put two active forwards into the break zone and now he only costs you zero <laughs> so lilisette uh dull a total of four active job dance or card named dancers deal 8k damage to all the active forwards the one problem with this is that 8k generally isn't enough these days but if your opponent's forwards are all minus 2k it now should be plenty enough to kill lots of forwards so yeah obviously you have to bear in mind that it is only active forwards but still pretty good Ultros. So Ultros being massive is pretty good, but actually if you have enough Ultros in the break zone to be able to deal even 6k to your opponent's board when they are minus 2, that means anything 8k is going to die. Um, again, Ultros with, I mean there's four different Ultros cards now, so Ultros being able to deal 9k to the field isn't even that hard anymore. But being able to make it so that your opponent's forwards are also tiny whilst yours are massive just really leans into this ability. Barbaricia. So you have to play this in the correct way, but <laughs> if you use Barbaricia's ability to deal each forward your opponent controls damage equal to his power at minus a thousand, then you play Vayne, it means that they will all have actually 1k more damage than their current power, so they will all pop and die. Rain, so your opponent's forward's already minus 2k, why not lean into it and make them even minus 4k and all your forwards a my a plus, sorry, plus 4k. Does that's silly, absolutely silly. And then you can also use Undermine, S and 2. All the forwards opponent calls lose 4,000 power until the end of the turn. So you attack with Vayne on the field and use Undermine. All your opponent's forwards are now minus 8k. <laughs> Ramza. So not hard to make Ramza a 10k forward now. So obviously his cost is reduced for every forward you control. Um, but uh, if Ramza has 10,000 power or more, Ramza gains haste when Ramza attacks two and forward of cost three or less your opponent controls, break it. So just having Vayne on the field means he becomes an 8k. Um, actually, sorry, no, he becomes a, um, a 9k because he gains a plus 1,000 for Vayne also being there. Um, so you could just have Vayne, Ramza, and Lulu, ba uh, Lightning Buffer, Backup Lulu. Lightning Backup Buffer Lulu. <laughs> this is a tongue twister. Um, yeah, so then Ramza just with Vayne on the field. He might only be he might be a 5 CP forward, but ultimately becomes a 10k, which will break something when he attacks, and he has haste. Vargas! So, uh, when a forward other than Vargas put the field into the break zone, Vargas gains plus 2,000 power until the end of the turn. And when Vargas attacks, choose up to one forward opponent controls. If Vargas is 10,000 power or more, activated, and if it, and it gains. If possible, this forward must block until the end of the turn. So with Vayne, he also only becomes a 9k. But with again Lebro, just a element buffer it means that Vargas will be a 10k and all your opponent's forwards will be small as well so actually having Vargas on the field making all your opponent's forwards block and or activating and then making a block whilst they're tiny and Vargas is huge is really quite powerful the crystal exarch so at the beginning of each of your turns um Oh, sorry, at the beginning of each of your act, uh, attack phases. <laughs> um, during each player's turn, choose one forward against plus 2,000 power until the end of the turn. So that's each player's turn. So it actually means Crystal Exarch triggers on your opponent's turn as well, which is good because obviously you can buff your own forwards even more on their attack phase. So somehow, if they manage to get this redonkulously big forward um, that even Vayne doesn't touch, you can still use Crystal Exarch to make it so that you've got a good blocker. Um, but also, the Crystal Exarch gains when the Crystal Exarch attacks. Choose one forward. If its power is less than Crystal Axarch's power, break it at damage 5. So, you know, that shouldn't be hard at all with Vayne and Crystal Axarch both on the field. 
Thank Crit. So his Blasting Zone S ability, Assistant S and Dull, choose one forward, deal it damage equal to Thank Crit's power. So making it so that Thank Crit's a 10k, I very much doubt that any of your opponent's forwards are going to be 10k or more with Vayne on the field. So having Thank Crit just being able to deal his damage and power is really useful. Kunshira. So obviously Kunshira's power goes down with the more forwards you control. But playing Vayne on the field means that her power goes back up again, which is decent, and your opponent's forward's power goes down. But you can also remove two backups from the game to play Vayne, which actually means that Kunshira will get bigger again, because, you know, if you have five backups, or even if you've got, you know, three backups, as long as you don't have more than three backups, Kunshira will be large, and she'll be even bigger with Vayne on the field. Freya. So, the Cherry Blossom S ability. S and 2 Lightning. For each Job Dragoon card named Dragoon you control, deal 2,000 damage to all the forwards opponent control. I mean, at this point, you can only have a few Dragoons on the field and use that ability. With Vayne, you're just going to board wipe them. But also making it so that all of your Dragoons are plus 2,000 power, whilst all your opponent's forwards are minus, that's just even more horrible in a Dragoon's deck. Meaning that just they are just insurmountable. They just keep on attacking and swinging and breaking everything, and it's just horrible. Chocobo Knight, because why not make your Chocobos massive, whilst your opponent's forwards are tiny. Um, yeah, nothing more to say, just big Bobos. Minwoo. So, it might be a case that all your forwards are huge, but if your opponent can deal lots of chip damage to your forwards, then well, that kind of sucks anyway. So, making it so that, you know, damage gets reduced to zero is really useful. Obviously, your opponent could have Kuchaspel as well, so that uh, damage cannot be reduced. But if you've got, you know, if you're in water, you could have something like Green Mage or Porum to cancel action ability as well. So, yeah, still easily a very good combo. Cool. Episode 65 done and dusted. Um, yeah, sorry about the little kind of delay in the videos coming out as well, because I was, you know, I got married and there was time when I was just doing stuff. So, uh, yeah, but ultimately we're back on track now. We've got videos um, coming out weekly again, obviously the card combo show and my Let's Play videos. And then there's going to be my uh, deck reviews as well, or rather my own deck decks that I've built, which I'll be showing to you guys and why I've built them the way I've built them. And behind the card and who knows what else? Stay lucky guys, I'll see you in the next video.